Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Mm, I have such a juicy episode for you today. We are going to talk about how to have better sex. So this is something that I love talking about. I feel like a lot of people feel that this question is taboo or like they want to talk about it. It's something they talk about with their close friends. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I was actually surprised at how many people like don't talk to their close friends about like deep parts of sex like guys sometimes talk about yeah I got laid or whatever and a girl's like yeah this thing happened but I find that for something that is so deeply intimate and so integral to um, at least for my life passion and pleasure and connection I feel like people could talk about sex a lot more in like a way that is just normalizing it you know like in our society today it has been made especially in religions um it's been made to be this kind of taboo subject like at least in the religion that i grew up in it was like don't have sex unless you're married but we're not really gonna tell you about what it's like and i remember the first time that i like no one told me about what sex was growing up like i i didn't actually understand what penetrative sex was until my seventh grade science teacher had to do sex education for us very reluctantly and he had like an overhead projector and he had like a penis and a vagina as these two different slides and he was like gyrating them back and forth and like explaining what penetrative sex was like when the penis goes in the vagina And I just remember me and all of my friends in the classroom were just like, ew, because the guy, the teacher was like this very weird, nerdy guy. And he didn't really want to explain it. He wasn't explaining it in a very good way. And it was very physical. And for me, even from a very young age, I've been very sensual and energetic. I think all of us, I mean, we're all made of energy, but like me especially, I've always been extra, extra sensitive to this. So to have the first introduction of sex be something that was very graphic and physical, like graphic literally, like here's a graph and here's a a picture of it and this is what happens. I was just kind of like, that's it. That's what everyone's making such a big deal about. And then I got married at 17 or 18, just barely 18, literally just barely 18 as a virgin. And I remember like my, my older sister had just gotten married recently also as a virgin. And on the day that I was getting married, she was trying to explain to me what sex was. And I remember even then, like I was about to get married, about to have sex. And even then I was feeling this internalized like shame around being comfortable talking about it I remember kind of like trying to like joke about it with my sister like oh it's not a big deal I don't want to talk about it this is embarrassed I was embarrassed to talk about sex with my sister and she was doing her best to be like a big sister and like prepare me because no one had prepared her and I'm just like wow this is crazy that this was my introduction to sex and then like as I got older and after I was married for six years and then after that I started exploring my sexuality and started understanding from the ground up from like my explorer like on the ground having sex and making love and talking to people because this is something that I find I'm very comfortable about talking about I found that like yeah my experience of like how I learned about sex was unique in a way just because it was like so like don't have sex before marriage but it wasn't so unique in the fact that um so many of my friends that I spoke to about like how did you learn about you know how did you learn about sex and like how did you first get introduced to it it wasn't also very nice a lot of them a lot of them learned about sex I think a lot of people learn about sex through porn uh, which again is very graphic and just very based on the physical and also very focused on penile um, orgasm so like the man having the orgasm like so it's very focused on the man's pleasure Uh, this is what traditional porn is programming us is like focus on getting the guy off basically and so as a woman being raised in this type of environment where um, you're kind of subliminally not kind of you are programmed to believe that sex is more focused on the male 
orgasm and the male having pleasure, um, it's kind of a fucked up way to grow up, honestly. Like, and as a woman, we have so much societal programming to please and to be these beautiful fairy goddesses that we naturally are. But a lot of it in today's framework in mainstream society has been twisted to make us objects of desire for the benefit of male pleasure. Um, and of course, as you become more spiritual and I think the younger generations uh, are starting to be like, what the fuck? I don't agree with this. Um, but there's still a lot of programming that we have around our sexuality that I think if we talked about more, we would start realizing, oh, this is really weird. And why do I do that? And what's this about, you know? And I'm organizing a play party this weekend here in Copenhagen. And so this is kind of bringing this up because I talk to a lot of people, like as they apply for the play party, some of the application process is me asking them like, uh, what is your connection to your sexuality? What are you looking to grow in your sexuality? And so many people say, like men and women and others say, oh, I just want a safe space to learn about what my desires are around my sexuality. And something that I have come to the conclusion is, you know, I kind of make this joke in the beginning of the play party, but it's not really a joke that like, you know, we a lot of times are doing the most intimate thing with another individual without being on the same team. So like when I make the play parties, I talk about it as if it's like sex school, you know, like you're coming here to learn about what turns you on, learn about your own desires, your own boundaries. And this is a safe space to explore all of those things and to be very bold in your yes. And to be very bold in your no of what feels good in your body at each moment. Right. And I, I was thinking like, you know, we go to school and we learn about science and we learn about math and we learn about whatever. And we're doing this in like a community setting with our peers, right? Like we're like, okay, I, I'm going to work on this project with you and we're going to learn about this history thing and we're going to grow in this together and we're going to do the science project together. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, that didn't work. Let's do this other thing. And you're like learning through, like for me, I learn a lot through watching what happens around me and through my own experience and also through learning from my peers basically so in a play party setting where it's very safe and it has good like boundaries and it's hosted in a way where you know the space holders are trauma informed and understand like how to hold a safe space it is kind of like this. It's kind of like sex school where you are, like I always say, like watching is also participating if you're doing it with the the energy of honoring the experience around you. So of course, like don't be a creep and like go and like stare at people and what they're doing. But like you can look around and be like, oh, wow, I've never done that before. I want to try that. Like, let's go try that, you know, or they look like they're having a lot of fun. Like I didn't realize you could do that. I didn't know that that could bring pleasure to my body. I want to explore that and see if that's something that I also really like. And I'm like, why do we compartmentalize this in our society where this has become such a taboo thing to explore in a safe space? And when it does become this taboo thing, as we all know, a lot of times what happens is we get trauma from it because we go into situations not knowing how to speak up for our desires, not even understanding what brings pleasure to our bodies. And then I have this joke that like, you know, you just kind of get into this dark room with someone, you take your clothes off and you just like fumble around in bed and like the woman's just kind of laying there like I hope he understands where my clitoris is and he's like trying to do everything he can to bring her pleasure and like no one's talking to each other they're not like being on the same team about it so again if you're working on a science project together and no one is talking to each other and you're just like putting chemicals in a, a batch of something and just hoping it doesn't explode it's like no, of course you would talk to each other and learn like, I think this is going to work. Okay, no, that doesn't work. I think let's try this thing. So why wouldn't we be on the same team in bed together? If you're doing especially some of the most intimate things that you could do, some of the most vulnerable things you could do with your physical body with another human, how much better would the experience be if we allowed ourselves to feel that we're going to do this together and we're going to talk about it and we're going to communicate and we're going to go through the experience as a team. So how do you do that? Well, in the play party, 
I have in the beginning a bunch of games where people can start practicing these things. That's why I call it uh, sex school because I give them these toolkits, like these these different exercises to do within the play party dynamic and also of course take it home and like try it out with other people and one of the things one of the games is okay so you're going to partner with someone and you are going to like if you don't know each other i have them like just use their arm so like this is the safe space from like your end of your hand to your elbow and you're going to touch someone like the other person you're, each person is going to get like three minutes to do this so you and your partner like one person's going to go first and the other person's going to massage their arm and whoever is receiving the massage is going to explain how they like to be touched. So if they don't know how they like to be touched, it can be like, can you just try things out and I'll guide you like, oh, okay, I like firmer touch. I like it a little bit slower or, you know, I like softer touch. Can you like kind of dance on my arm, like with your fingers and make it more sensual? And then I invite people as they go, okay, give feedback. If it's working, if they're doing a good job, tell them you're doing a good job. Like, again, we're working on this as the same team as each other. And I cannot tell you, and then you switch and the, it's the other person's time to receive and to speak up for what makes them feel good and how they want to be touched. And I can't tell you how many people tell me after the party, like that was such a simple exercise, but I have never done this where I consciously sat down with someone before we went into a sexual, sensual dynamic and had a little breakdown, a little conversation of how I like to be touched and have an exploration together as the same team. Um, because, you know, as I was saying, as a woman, like a lot of times we're programmed to not say anything and just receive and hope that they know what we like, which is just like weird. You would never do, you would never go to a restaurant and be like, yeah, just give me whatever you want. And I hope I, I hope I, I like it. I hope I like to eat the food that you've chosen for me. No, you would just tell them what food you want to eat. So the same, <laughs> but again, imagine going to restaurants your whole life and never being able to speak up for what you want to eat and just not, not even understanding how to speak up. This is like the level that a lot of women are at when it comes to sexuality. They don't even have the voice yet in order to speak up about what and to be able to do the exploration. It's so vulnerable to even say, hey, I want to explore what, how I like to be touched because I don't quite know yet, you know. And I'm sure men are also this way, but I'm just saying as a society, we're programmed as women to just kind of receive. And on the flip side, men have been programmed to need to have it all figured out. Like I must know how to pleasure her. I must know what she wants without ever, like you're going, you're talking to a new human. Like, especially if you're in a new dynamic with someone and you've never explored what you like together how is this guy supposed to know what makes you feel good? How is he supposed to know what, what, you know, what you like? And so what ends up happening is guys do their best to have this kind of like, I've talked to a lot of men about this. They're like, yeah, I've like explored enough or I kind of know that in general women like this thing. Um, like they like to be touched this way. So I just kind of do it like this and I just hope that it works out. And I'm like, have you ever asked them, do they like that? And they're like, no, because a lot of times the reason why they don't ask is because they're so worried about the rejection. They're so worried about, well, again, I think it's also just because there isn't a, like a vocabulary, there isn't a communication channel that has been open between most people when they're talking about sensuality and sexuality together. It's again, just like this, let's just get into a room and just suddenly things are happening. But how much more pleasure could we enjoy and how much safer could we feel in our bodies if we added communication into that dynamic of you getting in a room and getting sexy with someone? Because for me having lots of communication, at least initially, creates so much safety in my body. And it's so sexy. And I'm not saying like, so I want to make something really clear here. I'm not saying that when you get into a sexy time with someone, you should just be talking the whole way through. Because sometimes that's also not sexy. That gets you in your head, right? But if you had a situation where you're like, hey, I want to have this experiment. Let's go through this exploration together. Let's have one time where we are 
openly, like you can take turns, like I'm going to have it where it's your turn to, we're going to figure out what brings pleasure to your body. And this is just our session for you specifically. You can even put a timer on like, you know, a half an hour, put some nice music on, light some candles. And this can be the exploration for the first person to receive and to figure out what feels yummy in their body, what turns them on. Because not every woman is the same. Not every man is the same. Not every person is the same in what gets them turned on. So to have this blanket statement that all women like this or that all men like this or that all people like this in bed, is it's just like, what? Like, again, I want to use the illustration. Like when you go to a restaurant, you wouldn't just assume that all women like this one dish. Like that doesn't make any sense. You would you would just ask them and figure out what exactly they like. But the extra layer here is that a lot of women and men have never done this. And so they don't even know what they like. They haven't had a safe container. So if you do this where it's like, you know, you put a half an hour on the timer, you put on some music, you know, you light some candles, you create a safe dynamic, and then one person gets to receive and explore and you do it together and you talk about it all the way through. And it's a yes, no, firmer, softer, ooh, faster, slower. And then on a different day, I highly recommend it being not at the same time, not on the same day, the other person gets to receive and have this exploration together. And when you do this, especially in the beginning of a romantic, sensual, sexual dynamic with someone, the rest of the time that you are connecting with them, all those times in the future, you don't need to have as, as the same amount of external communication because your bodies already are in tune with each other and you're able to flow through the dynamic. Like, okay, here's a foundation of at least I know that he likes this stuff. At least I know that she likes this stuff. And the rest of it can just be a fun exploration without words. Or you can talk. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying that like do what you need to in order to drop in to your bodies because communication initially when you're first connecting with someone creates a lot of safety so that your body can open up and you can feel safe to receive more pleasure. So it might feel like, oh, it's not sexy to talk about this stuff. I just want to go for it. But it actually is the thing that will lead to it being more juicy later on. And that's what I find so funny is that, you know, if we just all would talk more, at least initially, we would have a lot better sex. We would enjoy, we would enjoy our sexual, sexual exploration a lot more with each other. <sighs> Some other things that we do in the beginning of the play party that I want to share with you that I find to be really helpful in creating better sexual dynamics between you and others is to have times where you are first connecting to each other in what I call a tantric way. So there's a lot of different things about tantra these days, but tantra is basically the way that you are able to connect to your bodies. The tantric exercises I'm going to talk about is a path for you to connect to yourself, to source and to each other. So one of the most basic tantric exercises when it comes to like neo tantra and sexuality is eye gazing. So again, this sounds like, oh, what the fuck? We're just going to look at each other. You know, one time I was having sex with a guy and I was looking at him in the eyes and he wouldn't look at me. He actually told me it made him uncomfortable to look me in the eyes while we made love. Do you know how unsexy that was for me? Do you know how much of a red flag that was for me? That he was willing to penetrate my body, but was not willing to hold my eye gaze. That, it, there is something definitely really off in that dynamic. And I never made love with him again. The reason why some people are so uncomfortable with this is that they have a very hard time being seen in an authentic way. And being seen is like, this is me as a soul who is encompassing a physical body. A lot of people have not come to that connection with their own source connection, which we all have. And so when they're connecting with someone physically, they're connecting on a physical level. 
So they're not allowing their soul to come through. They're just like rabbits fucking, basically. But as we become more conscious, we realize, hey, I want to incorporate all of this. This actually creates more pleasure in my body. This is actually nourishing for my soul. I would like to connect with someone, not just on a physical level, but on a soul level, on a level where all parts of me are aligned and one and fully present. And in order for that to happen, you need to take time, like it doesn't need to be all the time, but especially when you're first connecting with someone to drop into your body and connect to your soul while being seen by another person. So an exercise you can do with your partner or whatever lover you are connecting with right now. What I like to do is put four minutes on a timer, put on some meditation music. So anything that is like, you know, can be background, nice, soothing music and sit facing across from each other. You can hold hands. When you hold hands, you are physically tuning in your heartbeats to align to each other. And you look each other in the eyes without talking. Because when you talk, you bring your mental space back. You're, you get back in your head. But we are doing our best to drop into our bodies and allow our soul to come through while we look at the other person. And then you can take some deep breaths together. <sighs> And you can look deeper into each other's eyes. And you can smile at each other. Sometimes it's, a lot of times, it's very vulnerable to be seen in this way. Sometimes it can be more vulnerable than making love to someone, especially if you're not used to this. And so sometimes you can laugh. Sometimes you can cry. Sometimes it brings up a lot of emotions in your body. And all of those are welcome. And all of those you can give love. And when the four minutes are over, I invite you to notice how you feel in your body now. And I invite you to share with each other how you feel in your body now and share anything that came up for you, share anything that is in the space that is alive in your body and alive in your aura that you want to share. And I will tell you that this will very naturally bring you into a deeper connection to your own body to be more f present with yourself and also a deeper connection with the person that, that is sitting across from you that you just did the eye gazing with. It's very simple, but for a lot of people, it's very mind blowing. I love it. <laughs> I'm here for all of it. Um, and like, you know, some people ask me like, what's your definition of like amazing sex, Brittany? Well, you've had a lot of sex. You seem very in your body. You seem very in like your pleasure. And I am all of those things. Um, for me, it's, it's such a beautiful journey for me and my body in this timeline because I was raised in an environment where sexuality uh, was very like shamed and, you know, put away in a box for people who are married and like no one really talks about it, right? And I am naturally a very sexual, sensual person, and I've always been like this. So ever since I was even a child, I was very sexual, and I was very like moving this life force energy through my body naturally on my own. I've shared in past podcasts that I was masturbating before I understood what masturbation was. And, you know, that's just something that is part of me. So because it was kind of something that was, I don't want to say taken away, but it was like made to feel bad about and I wasn't able to explore it uh, like sex in the way that I wanted to explore it, like in this free flowing, you know, effervescent, like life force energy coming through me and sharing it with others. When I got divorced, I was married for six years in a monogamous relationship in a religious uh, environment. And when I, you know, let that go and I went into the world, I was very about, I was feeling very rebellious. Like I want to rebel. I want to have all of the sexual experiences. And this over the years led me to creating play parties. The, f the most ironic thing about all of this is that I didn't mean to create play parties. Here on the island, I have my community space and during lockdown we were doing like cuddle events with me and some of my close friends and more and more people heard about them it wasn't a public event i was just doing them because um i 
It's just what my friends and I did. And as it, as we progressed, there was probably like 20 of us that would meet every week. It was kind of like our drop in with each other. So we had our clothes on, we would just put all the mattresses in the living room and we would just cuddle and we would talk about how our week was going. <sighs> Those are some of my f- funnest times, most fun times on the island because it was such a hardcore soul family crew and we hung out all the time. We were always supporting each other and we were all a bunch of just like really sexy people who just loved each other. And everyone was kind of making love with everyone like throughout the experience, not at the cuddle events, but like just like in general and no one was committed to each other in a, like a long-term committed partnership. We were kind of like committed to the collective that was us And for me, this was such a safe container to explore my sexuality in a way where I was held in my community. And this was kind of like the foundation of how I started my play parties because people kept asking to join these cuddle events. And then I started having friends say, Brittany, you organize play parties, right? And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? No, I've never done that before. Um, like I have a business background. I just happen to have a community space where we do shibari and, you know, explore different things. But like it was never in the cards for me, at least in my physical mind, to organize a play party. And then after like the third or fourth time of someone asking like, Brittany, you organize play parties, right? I want to come to one. I was like, fuck it. OK, the universe. I'm listening. I'm listening. Apparently I need to organize these play parties. So the first one I organized was just for my friends. And we had like 30 of us. And my friend Daisy like wanted to bake cakes and my friend Lucy and wanted to do a tea ceremony. And so we just come and I wanted to get sexy and have a play party. So we all got together, like the three of us hosted it, our first one. And we had all our friends together. And something to know is that I had never been to a play party before I organized this first one, um, which I find really hilarious. Um, And the way that I created the play party was I just asked myself, what would I want to experience in an environment like this? So basically it was really my own sexual exploration and my own needs for safety is what was the foundation for the beginning of what became these play parties. And they, it went really successfully. Like everyone loved it. Everyone was like, when are we doing the next one? You know? And for me, it was really important that it was no penile penetration. So like no penis in vagina or anal. And everyone kept asking me, why is that? Because here on the island, it's very normal to have like they call it temple nights or orgies. (laughs) I feel like temple nights sometimes are just orgies with the spiritual name on top, whatever. I have my own opinions about that. But I felt very strongly that I didn't want to have full on penetration. And many of my friends asked me, please, can you do this? Come on, why can't we do it? And w- the reason why I did, I took that off the table is because it felt like the most rebellious thing to take what our society programs us to believe is the most important thing. So in porn, the most important thing is when the penis gets in the vagina. It's penile penetration. Like everything else is foreplay to get to that point in the dynamic. And I, one, don't want to have sex with people that I just met, like full on penetrative sex. I don't feel like that is safe in my body as a woman because what does that mean? Like who who are we going to be to each other tomorrow? Like my sexual energy is very precious. My womb is such like, I am a goddess. I know what kind of energy deserves to be inside of my body. And how the fuck am I going to know if I just met you like an hour ago that you deserve to be in my body? Like, no, no, thank you. And the second part was that we have such a big programming that like, this is where the real pleasure is at, is penile penetration. And I was asking myself, what would happen if I got all of these people together and we created this environment where it was safe to explore sensually, sexually, also in caring touch, where we're just cuddling, you know? What would happen if we took penile penetration off the table? Like, what would happen, basically? Like, what would we do? Because we're so programmed that this is the thing that we need to get to. And you know what happens? is a lot of fucking juicy stuff. It, it is a lot of people slowing down, choosing who they actually want to connect to, dropping in from a soul level, like who are you as a person before we connect sexually 
or sensually or even just cuddle. It ends up being a lot of people being in their inner child and flowing because women feel safe because they understand the boundary is we're not going to go to full penetration. I have to tell you that when a woman comes into this environment and understands that there's nothing that is going to, no penis is going to penetrate her that night, it creates a level of safety and freedom in her body that I haven't found anywhere else within these kind of sexual exploration dynamics. And I, I receive this a lot from women because they will tell me like, so almost all of the women that have come to my parties um, have said, like, I have been to, so some of them have said, I've been to other parties, but it has never, it has never felt like how I felt in your party. I've never felt as safe as I felt in your party. And then on the flip side, there's many other women who say, I've always been interested in going to something like this, but I never felt safe. I never felt that it was the right moment for me, but you have, like I've had over 2,000 people come through my parties in the last couple of years. And again, all of this is like blowing my mind that this is happening, but I'm just like, okay, universe, let's go, let's go. Like we're helping people. We're making impact. We're creating change in the world in a way that I find really, really fun. But like a lot of them say, like, I keep hearing about your parties. All of my friends have come. And it, if I'm going to go to anything, I think this is the one that I want to go to. And then they come and it's an amazing experience. And then they're one more person who passes it on, you know, as this word of mouth to all the rest of the people who come. So for me to answer the question, I think I went on a tangent there, what is amazing sex? Because I was in this rebellious phase and I wanted to explore all of these things around sexuality, I really have. I really have explored on a physical level um, the pleasure that my body can receive. Uh, I've also explored on an emotional level and started to understand there's something called demisexual, which means that you have to have an emotional connection to someone before you can explore anything, before your body can feel open to exploring things sexually. And that's definitely where I'm at these days. Um, yes, there are so many beautiful men that are coming through my vortex. And at the same time, if I don't feel a heart open, emotional connection to them, if they don't light my heart up and create safety within my emotional reality, they might as well be like, basically, I don't care how beautiful you are. If you don't make me feel safe in my body emotionally, we are not going anywhere sexually or romantically. And I've also explored having very quick, so outside the play party I'm talking about, I've explored having very quick sexual dynamics with people where like I meet them, like a lot of people come through the islands here and they're here for a week or two weeks or a month. And I've, I've had a lot of beautiful explorations with men and women where they're here for a short time. And I'm like, okay, I've always had this sexual fantasy. Let's, let's try this out. Let's do this. And what I found for myself at least is that after being able to prove to myself that this is, so what I found about every programming that we have and all our belief system is that when something is being programmed on top of us, so again, I, I, was, I was programmed that sexuality needed to happen in a certain way growing up. I wasn't sure if I was coming from my place of power of whether I wanted to, like how I wanted to do my sexuality. How did I want to flow through the world when it came to my sexuality? And so having all of this exploration, what I realized is that my body and my nervous system, one knows what I like for the most part when it comes to pleasure physically, understands that I need a very deep emotional connection and I choose to have a very deep emotional connection to someone before my body opens up to them. And thirdly, what's the rush? Like I no longer will open my body to someone who's only here for a week, you know, like, how do you know? Okay, I was just talking to a friend about this the other day. That um, most people have sex with someone before they understand whether they even like them as a person. So before they are friends with someone, they make love with them. And when you make love with someone, any trauma that you have 
in your sexuality and any trauma or any attachment which is like your deepest trauma that you have with your caregivers, so your parents or whoever raised you, this all comes up when you have sex with someone because it wants to be healed. And our first love of our lives are with the people who raised us. So for me, like the first love of a man that I had in my life was the one I had with, was, was my relationship with my father. And of course, this wasn't a romantic or sexual thing, but within our psyche, this is what we associate with our connection to this energy. And so anytime that I make love with someone, anything that is trying to be healed in my dynamic with the masculine, and my first masculine relationship was with my father, starts coming up in the dynamic with this guy that I just had sex with. And I find it so interesting that people will make love with someone and not know if they even want to be their friend and not know if that person can even hold a container for anything that's about to come up within the things that need to be healed. And then suddenly <laughs> all of your trauma comes up and you're just like either reacting to each other, running away from it. This is where the anxious avoidance stuff comes up. It's not even about you and this person a lot of times. It's about you and the trauma that you have with your parents or whoever raised you that is trying to be healed in this dynamic, but you have not given yourself a firm foundation of whether that person is even a safe person to go through this with and whether that person is even someone you want to have in your life long term. So <laughs> now that I've come to this realization like within my body. I think I knew it intellectually for a long time. But I had a lot of resistance and a rebelliousness to it because of my programming around my sexuality growing up. I was going back and forth on whether I felt like, you know, you can just have fun, just have sex, have, you know, have a casual sex with someone and then just let it be done, like friends with benefits. And I think for some people, they can totally do this. My body cannot do this. And this is something that I had to humbly admit to myself. And I actually don't know if most people's bodies can do this and how much of us are compartmentalizing ourselves in order to have these casual sex dynamics. Because really, we are tribal beings. We are our first right and our first need as a baby is connection because our connection to our caregivers is what creates survival. It's our, it's our safety in this world. And so for us to want to have this connection with someone, but we haven't secured within our psyche whether they're a safe person or not, like this is just like, what are we doing? I just, my friend and I were like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, you don't even know if you like the person. You don't even know if you're reacting from a trauma bond or if you even want them in your life next week and you're just like fucking them and then all this stuff comes up and then you blow up at each other and then, you know, you can heal it. You have the opportunity to heal it or you create all these projections onto each other and then you move on to the next person and you start to loop over. And I'm like, I am so over that. I am so over all these loops that we are doing. So for me, the most amazing, <laughs> to go back to my question that I'm trying to answer, the most amazing sex for me is being able to feel that this person has the capacity, one, that they're my friend first. Like on a le I'm not saying like friend as in, like you need, like I actually care about them as a human. I want them in my life, whether we have sex or not. I want them in my life. Like, can you, can you honestly answer that for yourself with someone that you're in a romantic connection with? If you weren't having sex with this person, would you still want them in your life as your friend? And that's one thing that I was talking about, like this crew that I had, my friends here on the island, where we were all kind of like sleeping with each other, but no one was fully committed to each other and we started the play parties together. A lot of those people are what I consider my soul family. We have made love in the past. We have dated each other in the past and we are no longer dating. We are no longer in a romantic dynamic with each other and still we love each other and we have each other in our lives and we show up for each other as these very hardcore friends who have each other's back. Can you say the same thing with, for the person that you're having a romantic relationship with right now? Are you on that level of, you know, ride or die, I'm here for you? If the answer is, I don't know, 
my question to you is why are you opening your body to them until that question has been answered? So for me, the answer to amazing sex is that that's a fuck yes. Like I want this person in my life, whether we end up flowing towards friends or romantic or just friends. Like I love them as a person. There is enough lived experience. We have, we have spent enough time together and built a relationship as friends before we've entered into a sexual dynamic for me to prove to myself that there's someone I want in my life. And the second thing is I need to know that this person has the emotional space and the emotional toolkit and capacity to hold space for whatever is going to come up in my body from my past trauma with my caregivers. This is this <laughs> might sound like a weird thing to say when you're like, what's the best sex you've ever had? But I'm just saying it's going to come up. It's going to come up. And maybe you've healed it already, and so it doesn't come up, that's fine. But if you haven't healed it, it's going to come up. And so for me, the question I have to ask myself is, just in general in my life, does this person hold space for me in a way where I emotionally feel safe in my body? Because if I'm going to have amazing sex with them, and I'm going to open my mind, body, soul, emotional reality, I'm going to open everything. This is just who I am. And can they hold space for whatever comes up? Like the last guy that I slept with, I told you in a previous podcast that like the first time we made love, I just started crying. I was just like, <laughs> I was like on top of him. We were like making love. It was so beautiful. And then I just start like sobbing uncontrollably. And it was because I was going through all this stuff with my family. I was processing my last breakup. I was just... You know, I was just like, what the fuck is going on in my life? And here's this beautiful man. And I, my whole body was like, okay, I guess I feel safe enough to open up in this way to this person. And you know what happened was he was able to hold space for that. He was able to stop everything we were doing, hold me physically and tell me everything's okay. I'm here for you. What do you need to share? How are you doing? And I was just crying and talking and, you know, and he was just like, I got you. So like energetically, emotionally, physically, he held space for me in a way that was supportive and nourishing for me. And that created so much safety in my body and so much yumminess in my body that I was able to process what, what had just happened, what was coming up for me. And then we continued to make love. You know, it was just like, it was all, it was all part of the beautiful exploration that was happening. And so that is what I would consider amazing sex. Someone that you can laugh with, that you can cry with, that you can hold space for each other. Because the re like all the things that I'm saying, like holding space for someone, feeling like someone, I can be some, someone can be my friend is like, those are things that I have explored within myself that I know that I can show up for other people in that way. Like I know that I can hold space in a way that is safe and nourishing and supportive emotionally and physically. <laughs> and I know that I can be someone's, I'm a very loyal friend. I'm a good friend in to all the people that I choose to have in my inner circle. Like I have your back. I'm very Scorpio about this. I'm like, ride or die. Let's go. You know? So to me, that is what amazing sex is. And I, I'm bringing this to your awareness to have you explore within your psyche if the people that you're currently having these dynamics with are meeting these needs. Um, because some of the reason why you might not feel that you can drop in all the way with someone sexually or romantically is because maybe you don't feel safe in your body. Maybe you don't feel safe... Maybe you feel safe physically with them, like they're not going to hurt you or anything, but maybe you don't feel safe that they can hold you emotionally. And that's just as important on a safety level. Your emotional survival, your emotional safety is just as important as your physical survival and your physical safety. And you deserve to feel safe all the way through in all ways. So if we're talking about this within the play party context, um, 
the reason why the penile penetration is so important is because, you know, I hand select all the people who come and I say no to many people because I can just tell vibrationally they're not ready to explore and maybe they're coming for the wrong reasons or they want to come for the wrong reasons. So I, I pick like a really good safe group of people and also at the same time, I feel like it's a best to take this penetration off the table because then you can just feel safe to explore yourself. The most important thing I say is you're the person. I'm like, yeah, everyone wants to come here and connect and you're going to have plenty of opportunities to connect with other people. But the most important connection that you have tonight is the one that you have with yourself. And are you able to honor what your body needs and what your body's asking for when it comes to pleasure, when it comes to, oh, this is a no for me right now. Are you able to honor that and speak up for it? And having this penile penetration off the table is just creates more safety for that self exploration. And then I always tell people like, if you really enjoy this exploration with this person, you can always take it home or you can continue it another day. Like, you know, this is the beginning of a lot of beautiful connections between people. And also, of course, if people do connect with someone there centrally or sexually, there is no obligation to connect with them outside of this dynamic outside of the play party and I feel like that's really important especially for women because you know we have this people pleasing thing that's been put in us I mean also for men at the last play party I found it really beautiful because a man brought up like how hard it was for him to say no um and I was like what do you mean and he was like yeah I feel like men are so programmed to be the one approaching approaching women and you know like basically picking the women that they find attractive that they want to have a dynamic with that within a play party setting or within a setting where women are more in their power and they're the ones who are approaching a lot of men don't have experience saying no and they don't want to hurt women and so they have told me that it's very hard for them to speak up on like no, I'm actually not into this. So even for men, it's like this beautiful exploration to honor their fuck yes and honor their no's, you know? Um, no, you know? <laughs> um, so some other things that I find to be really beautiful if you want to have amazing sex, as we all do, come on, who doesn't, um, is to really communicate your sexual fantasies with your partner or whoever you are connecting with romantically without the expert expectation. And you can say this in the beginning, I want to share these or I'd love to share my sexual fantasies with you without any expectation that we need to do any of these things. Because once there's expectation in there, it actually stops being fun anymore. But if someone can share it and just say, yeah, this is a sexual fantasy I have, uh, you know, I'd love to make love in this place. Like some of my favorite fantasies that I've played out is like um, with two men at the same time or in a public area where we might get caught. Like for a very long time, I had a strong exhibitionist part of me, which means like I like to be seen or I like the idea that I might be seen while I'm engaging in sexual dynamics. So like... <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, just having sex in public places where we might get caught or people might see us was like so turning me on. Um, and yeah, just being able to share about these in a way where you feel like it's safe and you're not going to be like shamed for it or that you're, yeah, it's just basically that it's safe and it's supported for you to share about the things that all your sexual fantasies. And a lot of times our sexual fantasies actually connect to how we played as a child. And then I know that might sound weird, but like, you know, like how you played growing up might play words. I'll give you an example. So like for me growing up in the playground, a lot of the things that I liked was like these games of like, um, you know, like when, when little boys would like pull your hair or, you know, like kind of like rough housing, but in a playful way, you know, and it was always just like this chasing game and like running away from each other. I'm talking about like little kids on like the playground, right? And I've noticed how that plays out in my sexual fantasies because I really like to be tied up, which is shibari. 
and just this feeling of like, oh, I'm running away from someone and now they caught me. And it's kind of this like this play of like, catch me if you can kind of dynamic. And again, this is all like a very healthy thing because for me, it's super playful. I feel safe in it. It's not like I'm like, I want you to dominate me and rape me or something. It's like, no, I just want to feel like we're playing. Like this is also, I did, um, a lot of people don't realize, but I trained in Brazilian jiu-jitsu for three years, which is like wrestling and it's like self-defense wrestling. So I would roll around and get super sweaty with these huge Brazilian black belt men. And for me, this was such a fucking turn. One, because they're very sexy. Two, because um, I felt like I could really exert my power and like, you know, like push and like, and like wrestle in a way where uh, I felt safe, one. And two, I just found it really fun and playful. And this would like really turn me on. And like, I, I've explained this to a lot of men in bed that, hey, I actually kind of like to have this push pull dynamic and this play in a way that it's safe and I feel safe um, because I just find it really fun. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, no, I don't want it. Oh, let's wrestle. And then, you know, and then, and then, and then you submit and things happen. Um, so, <laughs> so funny to share about this like this um I feel like a lot of people have these type of fantasies and they don't share because they're like you know there's this because in today's world we are um healing the masculine and feminine dynamic that has been playing out for centuries of like masculine energy dominating in a way that's unhealthy a lot of times today men are programmed to believe that they need to be really 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 safe uh, which, I mean, of course, it should be safe for women in bed, but it's to a point where they're like worried to actually exert any masculine dominance. Um, and that is actually at the core of what women really want. They want to feel that they can completely surrender to the masculine energy that is, they're interacting with. This helps them to be completely in their feminine, which helps them to open, like their bodies will naturally open up and feel safe. And it goes back to like primally, like when we're in tribes and the guys would go out and like hunt and protect and like a woman would be like, wow, he is a safe person. Physically, he has created safety for me and my children. He's brought food home and he's protected our tribe. Yes, my body wants to make love with this person, procreate. Like this is something that turns me on as the feminine. So because today we don't have as much of these physical men go out and do things in order to win our love, a lot of times men don't know what, <laughs> what they can do in order to create this feeling inside of us. Um, so a way that you can do this in bed is to create a safe space for the masculine to be in their masculine and to dominate. I say this in quotations, dominate, which means like, a safe space for the feminine to con to surrender and allow the masculine energy to take over, protect, provide pleasure, safety, all the juicy things. Um, this is why a lot of women have what I, <laughs> I have a lot of girlfriends who have um, very nice, safe men in their lives. This, these are the men that are safe. They will not do anything to dominate. They will not hurt anyone, they won't hurt a fly, which is also beautiful. But a lot of them are not fully in their masculine energy. And so a lot of my girlfriends have these fantasies of, which is like 50 shades of gray stuff, where a guy just comes in, ties you up, gives you all the pleasure, completely dominates you. And you know, all you have to do is surrender and enjoy and receive. So I'm bringing this to our collective vibration that why can't we have both of these things? Why can't you have a, what would it take for a guy to be safe emotionally and physically for a woman and also in bed be able to create this energy of I'm in control, I'm dominating the situation and allow the woman to fully receive and be in her pleasure. And this is why the stuff I talk about in the beginning is really important about talking to each other and having these sessions where you are exploring what each other likes, what each other doesn't like. Because for a woman, this creates safety for her later on when she wants to fully receive and fully surrender. For the guy to have some baseline information of what creates safety for her and what, what is like some 
basic tools of what creates pleasure for her. And then they can explore and add to this foundation later on with this very sexy dynamic of the polarity between the masculine and the feminine energy. And of course, also, it doesn't matter which body you're in. You can be two women, two men, but it's whoever is leading in the masculine energy and then whoever is leading in the feminine energy in their body, this polarity of energy can happen back and forth and it gets very juicy and very sexy and it feels really good all the way through. I will tell you because I've experienced this often in many of my dynamics with men. <sighs> so with that being said, uh, I'm going to go have lunch with a very beautiful man here on the island where we are exploring a dynamic. And um, yeah, I am going to, <laughs> I'm just like, now I'm feeling very juicy in my body. <laughs> I want to explore the things that I just shared with you. Uh, but yeah, we're taking it very slow, uh, which is really good and it's creating safety. The thing with me is that because I've had a lot of sexual explorations in my life and because, you know, like I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of this exploration, like when I meet someone new, it's almost like I want to get to the point where we're at the level of depth that I was with, like with my last partner and so that I can explore more deeper. But because I've gone so fast sometimes into the sexual dynamic and into the romantic dynamic, the real exploration for me right now is slowing down long enough to make sure that this person actually deserves this energy that I know that I can, you know, unfold into their beautiful reality and do I actually want to receive their energy in my body <sighs> so sometimes slowing down is the best thing that you can do in order for your exploration to get even more juicy later on because <laughs> the amount of energy that I have with this person is already very very juicy so I cannot imagine how much juicier it will get the more that we go deeper with each other emotionally first before we open a physical connection and i have all the space and all the time for those kind of explorations and i invite you to do the same because it's like <sighs> it's like i don't know can you feel this energy this is this is this is what i'm feeling right now it's it's very juicy i don't know what else words to say it feels really good in my body Sometimes him and I will just look at each other <laughs> and we won't realize that we're just like eye gazing for a really long time. And he'll just be like, you are so beautiful. And I'm like, ah. and then my friend will be like, hey, guys, <laughs> we were all talking. And I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> like the whole rest of the world will fade away. And that's the kind of connection that I feel like all of you deserve. So with that, I will leave you to it. I hope you have a beautiful day.